Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ bless, Most High in Christ bless. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I am Captain Amaziah. With me today I have... Officer Zedaniah. Officer Zedaniah is with me today. Okay, today's topic, today's topic, brothers and sisters, this is for you new brothers and sisters in the truth. This is, the topic is being new to the truth. Okay, being new to the truth. What obstacles do you face when you're new to the truth? Um, Lord's will, this helps you out. We're going to start in the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. In other words, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 2, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. If you come to serve the Lord. In other words, if you repent, okay? You repent, do what? Come on. Prepare thy soul for temptation. The Bible says when you repent, prepare your soul. Prepare your soul. Build yourself up. You're going to have to set a foundation. Go ahead. Set thy heart aright. Set your mind aright. Get your mind right. In other words, keep God's laws. Study, pray, apply. Okay, go ahead. And constantly endure. See what the Bible says? Constantly endure. The truth is a war, brothers and sisters, okay? Constantly. You're going to, have to, you're going to be fighting constant battles. You're going to have to battle the people you love the most. You're going to have to battle at your job. You're going to have to battle sometimes in your congregation. You're going to have to battle wherever you go, okay, when you repent. Go ahead. And make not haste in time of trouble. And when you are in uh, tribulation, don't make haste. The Bible says take it patiently when you read on down. Give me 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. The book of 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare. Uh-oh, it says the weapons of our warfare. What's the weapons of our warfare? Is it knives and guns and bats and bullets? No, we don't advocate knives and guns and bats and bullets or weapons, physical weapons. Our only weapon is this Bible. That's our weapon right here, to change the minds of our people. Not knives, not guns, not bullets, okay? So read that again. For the weapons of our warfare. Of our what? Our warfare. Because guess what? Like I said, it's a war. It's a war. You come in this truth, you are going to be warring, okay? You are at war. Before you repent, you and Satan were best buddies. You and Satan were like this. Satan loved you, okay? Your mama loved you. Everybody loved you just the way you were. But now you repent. You're no longer at the birthday parties. You're no longer at Christmas dinner. You're no longer at Thanksgiving dinner doing turkey, okay? Now you become an enemy. Now the war is on. Now Satan's upset with you. And Satan will use the ones closest to you to pull you out of the spirit, to pull you back to him. Go ahead, read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal. We're not, it's not a physical war. Go ahead. But mighty through God. The mighty through God. What's mighty through God? His words. Our job is to give our people God's words. Go ahead. To the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what's going to pull down the strongholds in our people's minds. Let's go to Matthew 10, 34. Let's go to Christ. What did Christ say? Let's find out. This is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. 
Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Wait a minute. That don't sound like the Jesus I know and love. He said what? Think not. That Christ I, said, don't even think it. That what? That I come to send peace on earth. Christ said, I didn't come to send peace on earth. Christ didn't come to send peace, but what? I came not to send peace. He said it again. He but, came not to send peace. But a sword. But a sword. What does a sword do, brother? If you slice somebody with a sword, what did you just, just do? You divided. You severed something. Let's go. Hold that. Let's go to Luke 12 and 51. Let's clear that up. Is Christ saying you're supposed to hit somebody with a sword? Because we just read our weapons are not carnal. So is Christ talking about he's going to slice somebody or you're supposed to slice? No, 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 no. Let's see what we're supposed to do, what Christ is saying about that sword. Luke chapter 12 and verse 51. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. Christ said it again. Hey, you think I'm coming to send peace here on this planet earth? Go ahead. I tell you nay. Christ said no, I didn't come to send peace. But rather division. Uh-oh, Christ said I came to, to cause division. I called to create a war for my people, for the elect. Go back now. Go back. Read it again. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Now we understand the point. Go ahead. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Uh -huh. I came not to send peace, uh -huh. but a sword. But I'm, I came to divide. Now Christ is going to even more clarify it. Read verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Uh-oh. He, I came to divide a man from his daddy. His daddy, taught, his daddy taught him birthdays, Christmas, Easter, and all kinds of filth. He taught him how to go to the strip clubs, how to do this, how to sell drugs, how to get all the women, be a whoremonger. Now you come out of that lifestyle. Daddy, I'm not doing that no more. Guess what happens now? Division. Yep. Daddy ain't dealing with you no more. Go ahead. And the daughter against her mother. The daughter against her mother now. I can't divide the daughter from her mama. Mama taught me birthday. She taught me how to dress like a whore. Yes. She taught me, she taught me, shake what your mama gave yep. you. She said, hey, get with Phil down the block. He got big feet. Mm -hmm. he get, he'll give you all his money, girl. Now, you come, now the sister come out of that lifestyle, say, moms, I don't deal with that no more. Guess what? Now there's a problem. Now there's division. Now there's variance. Christ came to divide. Go ahead. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law probably may, may have pulled her son mm -hmm. into the truth. Now she hates the daughter-in-law for pulling the son into the truth. Because the son ain't baby. dealing with that no more. Yep. You done took my baby away you from me. You done took my baby away from me. Now, give me Psalms 51 and 5. Because here's what the problem is, brothers and sisters. We, our families... Our unrepented of our people have been learned everything they, they got through what? Slavery. So in all actuality now, when you repent, you know what you are? You're a malfunctioning slave. <laughs> That's what you are. So your father's looking at you. Your mom is looking at you. Hey, what's wrong with my baby? He's not asking, hey, boss, what's wrong with this one, this slave over here? He don't want to do birthdays and Easter and Christmas no more like the rest of the slaves. Now you're that malfunctioning slave that is waking up to the filth. That we've all been in all our lives. Let's go. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. See that? I was shapen in iniquity. Go ahead. And in sin did my mother conceive See me. See that? In sin. By the time we come out of our mother's wombs, what do we know? Sin, brothers and sisters. We all know sin. Where do we learn the sin? Where do we learn the sin? Mystery Babylon, the great United States of America. We learned all our filthy lusts. Right here in Babylon. Pap, can I add something to that? What, that scripture is heavy as hell because it says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in my sin. Did my mother conceive me? A lot of us come from single parent households. Yes. So that means, yes. you know. So, yeah. Yes. Sorry. So in other words, single families, we, yeah. can, we come from uh, sexual deviant yeah. lifestyles. Yes, okay. That's what we were doing. Daddy left mom. Daddy got busy with mama and left her. She, the mama wasn't, wasn't good enough to marry. She was only good enough to sleep. But that's how the daddy think. Yes, sir. Let's go. Matthew 10, 16. So now we're all born in sin. We come out of that sin, right? Now we're new in the truth. Our minds are being renewed. We're learning something and a whole new lifestyle now. We're learning how not to destroy ourselves now, right? Read that. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Now there's a problem. The unrepented are the wolves. 
we are the sheep. We have to use wisdom at the workplace so we don't get fired. We have to use wisdom with our families so we don't end up back in sin with them, right? We got to use wisdom wherever we go. When we're out and about in the world, we got to use wisdom. Why? Because we are now targets. We are now being warred against. So what do we do? We use wisdom, okay? We don't have to go on a train and, and, and see a Jewish man on a train and shout down Bible verses at him like you ain't the real Jew. No, that's not using wisdom, brothers and sisters. We are to use wisdom, okay? We are to compel our own people, not yell down at the Jewish man or do all kinds of evil around town and all of that. No, that's not our job. Our job is to edify our people and use wisdom, okay? Let's go to Sirach 28, 27 and 12. Sirach chapter 27 and 12. Because guess what? The people that know you best, they're the ones that can possibly pull you back into back to Caesar Borgia, back to white Jesus. But here's what we're supposed to do. Let's see what the Bible says. Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet. See what? If you are among the unrepented, that's the indiscreet. Observe the time. What did the Bible say? Observe the time. The Bible says, keep an eye on your watch. Observe how long you spend around them. Because guess what? The more time you spend around a bunch of wicked people, what's going to happen to you eventually? You're going to fall right back. You're going to fall. You're going you're gonna to drop, okay? Because guess what? More, than, more times than not, the darkness overtakes the light in a relationship. Yes. Okay, read it again. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. The Bible says observe the time. Don't hang around all day. You see the indiscreet? Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, are you still alive? God ain't kill you yet? Okay. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Keep it moving, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. But be continually among men of understanding. The Bible says be continually among men of understanding. Who's that? The repented Israelite. Okay. Let's go. Jeremiah 20 and 1. We're going to read 1 through 4 really quick. The book of Jeremiah. Let's see. Jeremiah was a young man, right? Sir. Let's see what, what happened with Jeremiah when he learned this gospel. Sir. Jeremiah chapter 1. Oh, chapter 20, 20, verse 20. 1. Chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 1. We're going to read all the way to 4. Yes, sir. Now Peshur, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. This is you talking to your mom. You knew in the truth. You talking to your mom about the truth now. Like Jeremiah talking, talking the uh, prophesying. Go ahead. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah the prophet. It hurt Peshur so bad that he hit Jeremiah. Go ahead. And put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And it came to pass on the morning, on the morrow, that Peshur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Uh -huh. Then said Jeremiah unto him, uh -huh. The Lord hath not called thy name, Peshur, but may Goris... Magor Mesibeth, Mesibeth. For thus saith the Lord: Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself. So now, this is Jeremiah telling this brother what's going to happen to him. Sort of like how we tell our people: If they don't get out of sin, what's going to happen to them? Go ahead. I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon uh -huh. and shall slay them with the sword. Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived now, me. this is Jeremiah praying to the Lord. He said what? O Lord, thou hast deceived me. Read. And I was deceived. Read. Thou art stronger than I uh -huh. and hast prevailed. Uh -huh. I am in derision daily. Jeremiah says, I am in derision daily. I'm teaching your word. I'm passionate for your word. I learned this glorious gospel, and I want to share it to everybody. But I'm in derision as I'm sharing it. Everybody doesn't believe this word that I'm giving God. Go ahead. Everyone mocketh me. What? Everyone mocketh me. Ain't that what happens when you knew in the truth, mm -hmm. and you want to share your, your, your thoughts and, and God's words and how we could rule the world, and your own people look at you like, uh, what is wrong with this Negro over here? 
Something wrong with him. He talk about ruling and Jesus is black. No, look at Jesus right on my wall over there. You see that? That's what our people do. They mock. Okay? We're trying to help our people, and our people are in such a slave mentality, they mock. Go ahead. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil. I cried violence and spoil. Today, we're at a lowest state. We're in the ghettos of America. We're killing each other. We're selling drugs. We got to stop. We're the Israelites. Go ahead. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. The word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. That's you knew in the truth. You try to share that word, mm-hmm. yo, your family's the first to mock, your friends, they, they know you used to go to them with, to the strip club, you used to go to, you used to sell drugs, you used to smoke cigarettes last week. Now you share the gospel of Christ, they mocking you. Go ahead. And a derision daily. And, and, and a derision, this is daily. Go ahead. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. So now Jeremiah says, I don't even want to talk about this no more. I'm sorry I even spoke, opened my mouth, told my mama this glorious gospel. Go ahead. Nor speak any more in his name. I ain't going to speak about Jesus being a black man no more. Go ahead. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Woo! You see that? But the passion of Jeremiah said, I got to get this word out. It's in my bones. I got to speak this word. That's it. Uh, And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Now, give me... 2 Peter 2 and 7. No, go back to Sirach 27 and 13. Sirach 27 and 13. Sirach chapter 27 and verse 13. But here's one of the issues we have. You're at your job. You're around your worldly family that know your best. You don't know none of us. You're just new in the truth. You're just learning this stuff. But the people that know your best, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what the Bible says about the people that know you best when you first learn. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 27 and verse 13. The discourse of fools is irksome. The Bible says the discourse, the conversation of fools, the foolish, the unrepented is what? Irksome. It's irksome. It irks your nerves. Like, why am I even here Mm -hmm. among y'all? Like, Y'all ain't talking about nothing. Y'all ain't talking about ruling. You're not talking about getting your people off drugs. You're talking about how many rebounds did LeBron James have last night? Yep. How, how, uh, when are we going back to Brazil to, to sleep with all the women? Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, what happened with my check at the job? What about big booty Jet Becky at the job? That's, what, that's the conversations of the world. And that's all the conversation of the black man in America yes, at the job. Yes, sir. He talk about sports, money, or, money or some hoes. Yep, that that's is. it. That's all you talk about. Go ahead. And their sport is in the wantonness of sin. See that? It's all sin. Go ahead. The talk of him that sweareth much make the hair stand up right. See that? It's so it makes the hair on your neck stand up. Like, oh God, I gotta get I gotta get away from this guy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And their brawls make one stop his ears. Read on. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding. The strife of the proud, the proud is bloodshedding. Okay, go ahead. And their revelings are grievous to the ear. Their revilings are grievous to the ear. You don't want to hear it. 2 Peter 2 and 7. 2 Peter 2 and 7. So what are we talking about? The conversations of the wicked when you're amongst them. What did the Bible say? The Bible said, if you be among the indiscreet, observe the time. Look, I got to go. I got a roof to retar or something. Make, do, do something. You got to go. <laughs> go ahead. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. And deliver it just Lot. So we're talking about Lot. Read. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See that? It's vexing to your spirit, to your inner soul, <laughs> the conversation that you have with the wicked. Okay? Or, or being around the wicked. Even at your job, on your lunch break, you hear the conversations. You just, you just want to just wanna leave. You just want to be in a whole different world, a whole different atmosphere. Okay, read that again. And, de- and deliver it just lot, uh-huh. vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. There's more? Yes, sir. Verse 8. For, there, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. See that? Sirach 28 and 25. Let's go to Sirach 28 and verse 25. Ecclesiastic. My mic. Chapter 28 and verse 25. Read. The way and weigh thy words in a balance. Weigh your words in a balance. Weigh and your words in a balance when you're talking to your, to your unrepented. And make a door and a bar for thy mouth. Make a door and a bar for your mouth. You ain't always got to speak all the time. 
You ain't got to let everybody know how, how you feel or what you're thinking all the time, okay? Especially being you and the truth, here's what you do. Instead of letting your family know um, exactly what you're into, give them a video. Give them a flyer. If they sincerely want to know what you're into, give them a video or a flyer. Because at the stage that you're in, you more than likely are not articulate enough to convey the information without it being twisted or wrong. Okay? You may have some knowledge of Christ being black, the Jews are black, yes. But they're going to go and pause letters and confound the hell out of you. Okay? So it's best let somebody uh, more seasoned than yourself deal with that. At this particular time in your work, if you're new in the truth. And Cap, I was thinking because you can still possibly fall back into that sin. Cause least, see, you didn't, you didn't believe it. Either. You didn't right, believe yourself. Right, you didn't right, exactly. Especially, and being new in the truth, that could happen. You go for it right back. Oh, I just finished smoking weed two weeks ago. You trying to share the gospel of Christ. Now, two weeks later, you back to smoking weed. Yes, sir. Uh, where we at? Uh, that was uh, verse 25. Keep reading. Verse 25. Beware thou slide not by it. Beware that you slide not by your mouth because you're going to make a mistake in what you're, saying, what you're trying to edify your people in. Read. Lest thou fall before him that lieth in wait. And your family is laying mm -hmm. in wait for you to return back to yes, Caesar sir. Borgia. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what they want. They, they, so they go mock and say, oh, see, you back with me. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I knew, I knew you'd come back, man. I knew that Israelite stuff wasn't real. You know, I knew it wasn't real. Let's go to Luke 6 and 22, last scripture. No, two more scripts. Luke 6 and 22. The book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 22. This is Luke, chapter 6 and verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. What the Bible says, blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Men don't hate T.D. Jakes, nope. Creflo Dollar, um, Joel Osteen, Juanita Bynum, Paula, Paula Jones. Is that her name? Paula Jones, something uh, like that? Uh, Whatever. The blonde woman, <laughs> yeah. right? They're not hated. But who's hated? Israel United in Christ is hated. Yes, Read that again. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. That's a blessing. Go ahead. And when they shall separate you from your company. Uh-oh. When you're new in the truth, that's what's going to happen. They're going to start separating themselves mm -hmm. further and further away from you. The more you keep God's laws, the more your, your family and your friends are going to say, oh, I'm going to leave this dude alone. Yep. He ain't right. He ain't doing, he didn't bring me no Christmas gifts. He didn't bring me a birthday gift. <coughs> your mama going to say, Hey, that boy didn't bring me a, a Mother's Day yep, card. Yep. No, I didn't get no flowers from him. He hates me. Yep. That's what your mama going to think. So they're going to slowly separate themselves from you. Go ahead. And shall reproach you. And they're going to speak evil of you. They're going to be calling each other up. Mm. You know that boy in a coat? He in this, he in that. I don't know. What's wrong with that boy? Go ahead. And cast out your name as evil. Ah, uh, you see that? They're going to think evil of you now that you're in the truth. And your sisters ain't wearing pants no more. Sisters ain't bringing the, the boy over for, for, for Thanksgiving dinner no more. They're going to speak evil of you. Go ahead. For the son of man's sake. But it's all for Christ's sake. Christ said this would happen. Mm -hmm. So what do we got to do? We got to prepare our souls. Mark 10 and 28. But I got some soothing words for you. Mark 10 and 28. Last scripture. We're going to read 28 through 30. Yes, sir. This is Mark 10 and verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, uh -huh. Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Read. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, Read. There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Okay, so Christ says, Look, no man has truly left everything for my sake. Go ahead. But he shall receive an hundred. How, however, how, he... he Shall receive a hundredfold. When? Now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Christ said you're going to receive that lands, children, mothers, fathers. When? Now. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Stop. In this time. How do we receive now a hundredfold in this time? We have a congregation. We have brothers and sisters. We have fathers and mothers. Spiritual fathers. Spiritual mothers. Spiritual children. It lands right here with what? Now in this time, 
houses and brethren uh -huh. and sisters uh -huh. and mothers uh -huh. and children uh -huh. and lands with persecutions. Stop with persecutions, brothers and sisters, because this ain't an easy walk, brothers and sisters. Remember, the Bible says through much tribulation, that's how we're going to get the kingdom, brothers and sisters. This is not a cakewalk. Okay, this is war. Read. With persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. And in the next world to come, eternal life, brothers and sisters. So that's 15 minutes with the captains. The topic is being new in the truth. I pray it was edifying. I'm Captain Amaziah. I'm Officer Zedaniah. And with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.